Thank you. Sorry for the phone call. Jeez. Okay, so anytime that if my fabric is already folded and it's small pieces like this, and it tells me to only cut one, I cut two anyway. Number one, that gives me the flexibility to change my mind, especially on the zipper pieces, because zippers can either open from the left or open from the right. You can have egress from this side or egress from this side. And girl patterns will tell you one way, boy patterns will tell you the other. Ungendered patterns won't tell you one way or the other, they'll tell you to just pick. But if I have both of them cut, then I'm not already locked into a direction. I can choose on the fly, if you will, which direction I wanna go. Uh, the waistbands, my first instinct is to just cut two of one of them and be done. But this is the right waistband, this is the left waistband. And what would happen if I did that? If I cut two, of the left one, then my waistband's short. If I cut two of the right one, then my waistband's long. Why is my right side longer than my left side? Yes, it's planning on a left egress overlap. I don't necessarily know that I want that. So I cut two of both of them because once again, it gives me flexibility to change direction once I kind of figure out what I'm doing. The other thing is it, it does is if my fabric is lightweight enough, it gives me the option to use fabric as a facing or as an interfacing instead of using interfacing. So I can self line it to give it structure. I just sew two pieces like these two pieces together. I would just serge them totally together. They become one piece, but then I don't have to use interfacing and it's still structural and it's still clean. And I can do that with the fly shield as well. I probably wouldn't with the waistband because the waistband takes circumference and gravity and weight and torque and twist and so it needs a little bit more structure anyway but this gives me the freedom to choose now i'm working with a little tougher fabric a little more rigid fabric and i don't know that i like the feeling of that inside my pockets i don't like pocket lint i don't like when i put my hands in my pockets that it's so structured that i can't get my left grease out or my keys out i hate it when it fills up with sand or you know if i'm doing work pants that's the worst so I tend to stick with cotton linings, really smooth, nice feeling cotton linings for my pocket linings, just because I like the way they feel inside my pocket. The flashier, the better, because then I know my pants are sassy. Nobody else has to know they're sassy, but it helps with my own personal psyche. So I kind of like that. I like the sassy pockets. It's just like shoving it in everybody's face, but they don't know I'm doing it. So process general order of operations once you have it cut the very general process says yokes first that's what you should do first yokes and darts number two you would do pockets number three you do a fly then you move into inseams out seams crotch seams and then you do the waist at the end that is a very generic basic order of operations how does that change well, if I want to do a flat fell on these inseams, then that means my, my inseams have to come first because they have to be done before I can do a crotch line and I have to have this part of the crotch line right here done before I can do a fly zipper. So that changes my order of operations. Now, if anybody's doing the Jutland or the Jedediah pants, your order of operations is going to tell you to do the fly zipper last. It's not my favorite but it's fly right here has the fabric kilted out again. So this piece is in essence already attached to your fabric. It's missing the step where you attach it. Okay, it already has it part and you just fold it under. And it has fold one side under bigger than the other. That's why there's two separate notches up at the top. And that's how you're getting your underlap and your overlap for a fly zipper. Like I said, it's not my favorite method. It's very difficult for me to get clean and, and avoid any bubbles at the bottom of the crotch zipper. But the other thing that I don't particularly like about it is it's really subjective on those folds and getting those crease lines full or straight. 
but it also you're having to work around the entire pants in a de delicate area to try to get that area clean because if you do your fly zipper well nobody will ever pay attention to it nobody will ever see it nobody will ever notice it if you do it wrong everybody's eye will be drawn to that zipper and everybody will see the error it's just human nature that they're going to be drawn to the thing that is glaringly wrong and that is not a place I want anybody's eye to draw if I am wearing the zipper. Does that make sense? So the fly is pretty much the most critical piece of these pants and if you can get the fly clean then everything else will work. So even with the Jutlands and Jedediahs, I would consider the idea of changing your order of operations and doing the fly towards the beginning. So if I were going to construct these, if I had no instructions and I was just doing my own thing, first of all, I'd put the yokes to the back. Now the yokes go like this. It seems really counterintuitive. It seems like it would go the other way, but it doesn't. It makes your crotch seam in the back longer. This is a curved line hooking to a straight line. This is bias. This is not. So they're going to stretch different. And if you are not careful with your pinning, you're gonna run into trouble. So make sure you pin at the end, you pin at the end, you ease everything in the between. Because as long as you're accurate with your cutting, this should be exact. Okay, so I'd put my yokes on, I'd put the backs away. In the front, I don't have a yoke. So next on my list of order of operations, what am I gonna be doing? What would be next? What's going to be the next most difficult thing to do if I've got tons of extra things attached? Pockets. So I would do my patch pocket first. Notice how I have no pocket markings on the back of this. I chose not to put them on because I've done enough patch pockets to know that I never like where they place those pockets. So I make my patch pockets. I hold the back up, I usually pin it to my clothes and stand in front of a mirror and I'm placing my own pockets and kind of pinning them on as I go. I usually have a buddy, I walk away. I'm like, how is the line look? What I'm looking for is an optical illusion. Drawing your eye out to the hip so it looks like I have more of a waistline. And that's how I decide pockets. Once I get them on, then I'm checking, can I get my hands in them easy? Am I at a weird, angle are they too low are they too high are they too far out and i just decide my own pocket placement if you don't want to go to that extreme make sure you mark the pocket placement on your fabric it will have two dots at the top that the two dots is the top corners of the pockets when you put those on okay now when it comes to pockets your instructions are going to tell you to hem the top of your pocket and then start folding in and mitering your corners. That makes me absolutely crazy because I never can get the top folds to look clean and not have a raw edge that is exposed. So my suggestion is construct the hem of this backwards, which means fold down your turn under and press it really, really good so you get a nice sharp edge. And then like accordion fold it like a church accordion fan and pin it this way. Oh. Okay. Then on my seam allowance, I'm going to sew from this fold right here up and off the edge. And I'm going to back tack both places. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to get really close to the seam allowance. And I'm just going to curve out some of this extra seam allowance. But I'm not going to come anywhere near this fold. So by the time I'm down to this turn under, I want to be off the fabric. I'm just cutting out this little curved corner. Then I turn that inside out and all my top hem edge is already contained. Seam allowance, clean, cornered, perfect. And it allows these edges to already know how they're gonna turn under. So it assists you in turning under the rest of the pocket. When I come down to here, I usually fold the corners in first then I fold these in, then I open them up and I miter in these corners, just so I don't have any weird pucker or seam allowance that comes out of the edge. So should you finish these seam edges before you start doing pockets? What do you think? 
I see somebody nodding yes. Why? You don't know? Okay. It doesn't have anything to do with putting it on the pants, actually. What it does do is it keeps the structural dimensional stability of the pocket safe from you as you are ironing and folding and maneuvering and trying to get that pocket to be the shape you want it. It keeps your edges controlled and safe so they don't fray and they don't distort and they don't change. The other thing it does is as you wear these pants and as you launder these pants, it stops the fray inside your pocket from building up those um, fur balls and from degrading your pocket from the inside. So once you've done this edge up here, you can't get to these edges down here anymore to finish them. So finish it before you ever touch it. Just surge all the way around the edge. Just a little surge, that's all you have to do. You can pink the edges if you want. It's totally up to you. Once you have the pocket ironed, pressed, ready, place it on the back, top stitch it on. Now this is where your pre-approval comes in handy. Have you already thought about a top stitching plan? Are you doing one row of stitch? Are you doing two rows of stitch? Are you not doing any stitches? Well, you gotta have something to put your pockets on. If you're doing two rows of top stitch, you need to top stitch this pocket on the inside line, the quarter inch line, before you ever put it on the pant. Because if you put it on the pant and then try to do two rows of top stitching, you've just lost an inch of functional pocket because your stitch on the pant is in all three directions. So if you're doing two rows of top stitching, that inside line of stitching has to be accomplished before it ever touches the pant rack. Okay? I'm like trying to decide if I have one. So this little itty bitty pocket, can you see that? Not very well. I have a top stitch here because I can't top stitch once it's on the pants or else I've just top stitched my pocket shut. I have my second row of top stitching, which holds my hem and my turn under where I need it to be. I knew I was doing two rows of top stitching on this pant, so I have already completed the inside row of top stitching. Then I'll put it on the pant and I'll just edge stitch the second row once it's on the pant. Does that make sense? Okay. Then my pant backs will be set aside for later. Now, everything else happens on the front for quite some time. I could do the zipper, but I don't want to yet. Instead, I want to work on this pocket to get this pocket done. And that's gonna include these three pieces. This is my pocket bag. It goes on the pocket right here and then folds in half. But then on the outside of the pants, can you see what happens? That's what the outside of the pant would look like that would be a problem for me. So that's what the spacing piece is. The spacing piece gets sewn right here. Then you sew the curve. Nope, wrong curve. There we go. Then it would get sewn. Then I don't break the line of the pant, but inside my pocket, it's sassy. Does that make sense? Once I get that pocket done, then I would move on to the fly. Now the fly, I was going to do a demonstration today and I probably will sew it today. And then um, while you guys are working, I don't wanna take your work time to demonstrate that. One video for you guys is enough today, right? So I'm gonna let you start laying out your fabric and start working on it. Then I will sew the demonstration video for the zipper and I will get that on, you, on canvas. And that's just kind of how these pants will progress. Does anybody have any questions about that? Everybody is on to your mids, right? Are you cutting out fabric today? Sweet.